All right, so um, we did not finish the SPI examples in class. Uh, so here I'm uh, finishing um, finishing the slides by Huang. Uh, and this is the last device that they look at. This is a um, basically real-time clock chip that does have alarm capabilities as well. And you can see here is the pin diagram that looks at, um, you know, what features it has. And it has um, some, some interrupt inputs like these two guys. And then it has the serial interface that, that you can communicate uh, through uh, with a, a PIC chip. It also has a 1 hertz uh, output signal that allows your pick. So if if your pick, if you have a circuit that has this one on your pick, and you do need pick to do some things at you know one hertz, then you don't need to dedicate one of the timers on pick. You could simply tap into this signal and maybe connect it to the int zero pin on the on the pick microcontroller um, or something, and then you know use that to do the one hertz uh, operations. Now, the uh, b block diagram of it is something like this. And this is similar to what we've seen with previous uh, chips. So basically, you have your serial interface connections, which are, uh, you know, clock enable. And then so th this, this would be, uh, sorry, chip enable, which is similar to that SS bar that we've seen uh, in previous uh, devices. And essentially, this takes care of communicating. And whatever that it communicates is going to put into through this input shift register through these registers. So there are some, you know, clock and calendar register, control registers, and user RAM for putting, you know, some of the uh, some of the custom designed stuff in it. And also it has things that take care of, you know, doing the trickle charge of the battery that we are going to skip. Um, and so I'm going to skip the detailed descriptions of these. Uh, this shows you the register map. Uh, so you can see that similar to what we had with that uh, device that did the temperature sensing, uh, this one also has read addresses and write addresses for all the registers that you have in the chip. And these are 8-bit registers, so bit 7 down to bit 0. And it has the second and the 10 second. So if you want to store the value of 23, you would just write 2 here. So 2 would be 0, 1, 0. And then you would write 3 here. So it would be 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, and that's the way that you would do. So this is called uh, the... BCD binary coded decimal um, encoding so that if you need to and, and the reason that they didn't put binary in here and they put uh, binary coded decimal is because if you read it and then you want to convert it to decimal then you don't have to have a loop that says successively divide the value by 10 and take the so if you remember in the I don't remember what example it was that we needed to convert a value to decimal. But essentially, if you have a value, let's say, V, uh, which is a binary value that you have, and then you, you would essentially, well, you would essentially say uh, decimal digit 1 is V percent 10, and then you would say V divide equal 10 as an integer, right? So if you have a value of... 456 then if you take the percent 10 you would take 6 to be digit 1 and then you're dividing 456 by 10 which becomes 45.6 but the, since this is an integer operation it becomes 45 and then followed by again saying digit 2 is v percent 10 which will give you 5 and then the other one will give you 4 and so on right so all of this could be skipped if your data is already represented using binary coded decimal like the one that is done in this chip. And you don't have to worry about the fact that if you want to increment the values, the values here are not the binary 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, but it's a binary coded decimal of 23. And this chip, the timer chip, takes care of doing the binary coded um, 
decimal operations. By the way, you can do that in PIC too. There is this DC decimal carry bit. Uh, so the hardware automatically does detect things like if you, if you are adding, for if you're incrementing, for example, 29, which is binary code at decimal. If nine increments to A then the BCD operation would tell you and then there is the BCD adjust operation that changes to A into 3, 0. Uh, but yeah, I'm diverging too much. Uh, so essentially this is the register for the second. This is the 10 minute minute. And then you have this other register which does this bit says, are you in 12-bit mode or 24-bit mode? So zero, for example, means you're doing 12, sorry, 12-hour 12 mode. One means you're doing 24-hour mode in terms of the displaying of it. And if it is the 12-hour mode, then this bit by being zero or one would be PM or AM. If it's 24 hours, then this would be the 10 value of it. And this would be the 10 hour, this is the hours. Um, and here it gives you the ranges of the values and how they are, um, you know, interpreted and so on. And then you have the day, day meaning the day of the week. So it has three bits for the seven days of the week. And then it has the date, like the 4th of July, right? So the four value would be here. This is the month and 10 months, year and 10 year. And so this would be the time. This would be the current time that you have. And then you have an alarm zero, which has exactly the same set of fields for it, and uh, except for the date, right? So you would say every Monday, uh, give me an alarm at time X, you know, th this hour, minute, and so on. And then they have alarm one that has that one too. And then they have control register, status register, trickle charge register, and so on. Okay. Now, the way that you would access these, if you want to know what time of day it is now, you would send the address for reading the minute, and then in the next transaction, you would retrieve the minute value. Then you would send the address of 0, 2, and then in the next cycle, you retrieve the value of hours. I'm not going to repeat, you know, writing the code. It's pretty similar to what we had with the temperature sensor, uh, which essentially uh, I, I showed you in class how to write the code for that. And that also had, you know, two transactions. So you write into SSP, uh, so you, you write in SPI1 buff uh, the value of 0, 1. You wait for SPI IF to finish, and then you don't read back the value of SPI buff. Then to initiate reading the actual value, you initiate a new cycle by saying SPI buff equal some junk value like FF or zero. That kickstarts the process and you wait for SPI IF and then read the value which is which appears in SPI buff and that would be the 10 minute and minute values that you have here. Um, what I want to focus on is um, and let, let me skip the control register that, you know, that says that one hertz is enabled or not, and then, you know, alarm one um, is, uh, is on or not. Uh, but what I want to focus on, and let's just skip all of this trickle charge stuff too. Um, so this is how you would connect it to your PIC microcontroller. So this would be your PIC. I mean, here they are showing a PIC 18, uh, but, I mean, you could do similar things with your... Uh, pick 24. Uh, so they have the int 1, int 0 connection. So for them, the 1 hertz is connected to int 1 for displaying the values. If you want to display every second, you want to display the second, minute, hour. So this would be, this could, for example, be the, the clock in your car, right? The, in your car, you don't have, uh, you know, milliseconds shown. You only have seconds, and you only need to update it every second. So that's uh, that's what this is for, to connect to a seven-segment display or any d LCD displays that you might have. And then int zero is um, configured to be the alarm clock. So 
in, in this particular implementation, they're ignoring alarm one. They're only using alarm zero. And it's supposed to give you the int zero when your alarm is supposed to go off. And that means that you're doing an out output compare. Uh, and you remember, we had the siren example, right? So this could be doing an alarm, like, you know, beep, 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 beep. And then, you know, you, you would do the timing using timer two for when to turn on or off the tone and to doing the tone the actual tone you would use something like an output compare to take care of it uh, and this is you know request to set time so on your hand watch I don't know how many of you still carry uh, I do but then you have a button that says I want to set time uh, and then you know indicate new time available uh, you know, by the, the user would either uh, use some keypad to enter it. Anyway, I mean, the point is, I don't want you to uh, focus too much on the exact implementation and how these are connected. The point is, you have a bunch of serial communication that do the, um, you know, send the commands and make sure that, you know, it knows what to do. And then there are a bunch of notifications coming in from this um, real-time clock chip. What you do with the data is, you know, basically depends on the application that you have. Uh, and then let me just forward to some of the uh, some of the code that they have. So again, note that the the code is written here for PIC18. So for example, you don't have SSP buff. You have SPI1 buff. Uh, and usually we don't check for the buffer full. Although there was one bit that I showed you when I was going through the SPI bits that I said you can check to see if there is no more bits left in the shift register and that could show you that the communication is done. We usually, instead of checking on that bit, we use SPI IF to check to see if the communication is finished. But the point is, uh, you can read this code, you're more than welcome to read the code, but don't let it confuse you with what you have in PIC24. If you think that's the case, then don't even look at the code specifically, you know, that, is, that, that has the specifics of the SSP buff and stuff like that. But the code that I want you to look at are the codes that deal with the formatting. Uh, so for formatting, they, uh, they basically say these are the formats. Uh, and uh, for the XX, they say it could be SU for Sunday, Monday, Saturday, and so on. And the way that, and suppose that these are sent to an LCD display, right? I mean, we haven't covered LCD displays, but you can imagine that there could be devices that you could say, show character A on the screen, right? Or this could be a terminal, as you will use in your discussion. Right? This could be a terminal that shows the values through user, right? Um, so the way that they calculate the stuff. So if you want to show something like this, HH colon MM colon slash etc., then this is what they do. They say if you have the 12 hour mode, so if current time 2, uh, 40, so current time 2, let me go all the way back. So you can basically uh, read all the values of these registers and put them in arrays, right? So this would be current time 0, current 1, time 1. This register could be current time 2. So you can basically look at this bit and determine if you're supposed to show things at 12 hour or 24 hour format, right? So you would just say if current time 2 and 0x40, if that bit is one that's the 12 hour mode then you're saying that our minute second as a string register character 0 is going to be 30 so 30 in hex is the digit 0 okay so this is how you convert from the actual decimal values like 0 1 2 3 to the ascii code of 0 1 2 3 to be shown you add 0x30, which is the ASCII code for the character 0. Plus, your current time to and it with 0x10. So this is essentially in that field, which has the... So this field has the 10 
of the seconds or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and this one has the single, you know, least significant decimal digit. So basically what they're doing is they're ending it with one zero, which is get rid of these, and then shift it by four. So if you get this value and then you shift it to 10, then this would be the values of the 10. All right? So and then you're adding it with so so the value in 10 this could be for example 4 for 45 minutes for example, right? So you're adding 4 to 30 hex. This becomes 34 which is the ASCII code for the digit 4. And then they say HMS 1 is this HMS2 is colon, and then at the end, you're adding HMS11 equals zero, which basically means that create a character, a zero terminated string character. So it could look like something like this. Your hour is zero to, and then colon, 45 minutes and uh, 23 seconds, and then that character zero to make it a complete um, you know, string character. Uh, and then, you know, but when you want to show the day of the week, then you have DMY, which is the, you know, could be a string of length um, three for just showing Sunday, Monday, it could be much longer, it could be showing, for example, Sunday, um, you know, 0, 06 slash 23 slash 14, something like this, right? So for setting these two, they're saying if the value of that day of week is 1, then put SU as the first two characters of it, otherwise do Monday, Tuesday, and so on. So a lot of, you know, code that has to be written to do the formatting, but you know that it's not going to take long for PIC to go through this, and you have to go through this exercise. Of course, I mean, you can use table lookup as well, as we did with the seven-segment display in the, in the lab and discussions, but, I mean, this would be this kind of code that you have to go through and write a stuff. All right. Um, let me let me stop here. I think you know it should be clear by reading, you know, going through this kind of code that would help you do some of the coding. Uh, and this would be it for the SPI stuff. Thank you.